Out of the darkness of his parents' room, he heard his baby sister crying. Suddenly, the thing lost interest in him and turned to walk in the direction of the crying child. Still frozen in place, he looked toward the kitchen for his mother. It was time for his mother to take her nightly trip to the river to fetch water for breakfast. This thing wasted no time and disappeared into his parents' room. Suddenly, he could move again. Without thinking, he ventured into his parents' room to save his sister. He figured maybe he could make enough noise that his parents could hear him and rescue him. Either way, he was hell-bent on fighting off the intruder. As he entered the room, the darkness embraced him from all sides. The room was dark and eerily quiet, with the moon providing little illumination. That's strange, he thought, and he turned to look at his parents' bed, hoping to locate his baby sister, but saw nothing but an empty room. Relief came over him as his worst nightmare was over. Then he heard a crackly, low-pitched voice coming from behind him. Donde esta la niña? Where is the baby girl? The voice echoed in the dark. He felt her breath on his neck, which sent shivers down his back. He turned around quickly, out of a primal instinct to defend himself. And there she was, standing behind him, at arm's length from him. Without thinking, he made a dash for the door. Not noticing an elevated step, he stumbled forward and fell onto the patio. Aching from the pain, he stood up quickly and locked the door behind him. The door, made of hard metal with a handle to lock it from the outside. Now the witch was trapped inside his parents' room. Suddenly the door jiggled lightly. He got near it. The witch slammed itself against the door, knocking him backward again. The door shuddered violently, cracking and twisting, but the door did not give way. Then it stopped, and a soft voice came out. Let me out. Please, let me out. My father just stood there, speechless. Then the voice turned into a loud moan. <laughs> My grandparents' door had two small windows on its top half, big enough to see inside. That's what the family used as a natural light in the morning. The moan stopped. He decided to look inside, thinking maybe she was gone. The sun was appearing behind him. Maybe it's over, he thought. He got on his tiptoes to take a quick peek. At first, he saw nothing in the darkness of the room. Out of nowhere, the witch's face appeared, inches away from the glass. That's when he finally took a really good look at the woman. Her face was completely white, with sunken black eyes. It didn't look like a woman anymore, but more like a corpse, with long, matted white hair and old, rotted skin that barely gripped her face. She gave him a wicked smile as they made eye contact and her teeth, like fangs, stuck out like daggers from her mouth. It slowly nodded one last time at him, as if telling him she would see him again, and pointed her long finger in his direction, tapping the glass as she smiled, looking at him. He quickly stepped back in fear and decided to run toward the lights in the kitchen. Dad, Dad, there's a witch in the room, he yelled. His mother and father were in their usual seats, eating breakfast by the fire. They turned to look at him in confusion, and, without saying anything, zoomed past him toward their room. Wait, hold on, he screamed. But his parents unlocked the door from the outside, ignoring his desperate plea. They opened the door while holding a machete, ready to take any intruder out. But nothing was there. By this time, the sun had risen and the rooster started to crow. They looked under the bed and in the closet and found nothing. His mother slowly walked in. It was her, the witch. She explained that she saw her every night standing on the other side of the alfalfa fields, sometimes during the early morning hours. La Bruja.